Hey folks, welcome to this video where we are going to look at deploying a function to Spring Cloud Dataflow. In this video, we're not going to be going through how to set up Spring Cloud Dataflow, get it up and running, but I have another video which I'll link to, which shows you how to get it up and running. So in this video, I'm just going to start Spring Cloud Dataflow now using Docker Compose. Just set a couple of environment variables and get Docker Compose up and running, run it in detached mode. Okay, and I'll skip the video forward while that's just coming up. Okay, that's all done. So just to prove that that's up and running, let's just open another tab here. Okay, it can take a little while just to come up. So just another thing to bear in mind is that we will be running this with Kafka as the messaging middleware behind Spring Cloud Dataflow. Spring Cloud Dataflow can work with other messaging middleware such as RabbitMQ and Kinesis and Google PubSub. Okay, so let's just check that that's up and running. Okay, and we have Spring Cloud Dataflow up and running. So if I just click on applications, you can see that we've got a list of default applications which are available out of the box. You can just import those if you want to. So if I click on add applications, I've got all these options to import existing ones, RabbitMQ and for Kafka. So if you use anything else, you'll have to build your own ones. But also if we want to do something specific in an application and one of these default applications is available out of the box, doesn't do what we want, we can go ahead and build our own, which is what we're gonna do now. So first of all, we're gonna go over to start.spring.io, which is really pretty much where you you should always go to build your application. So we're going to use Gradle. Okay, and let's just give it a name, something like function demo. So Java 11, Java file, and let's add some dependencies. So we're going to add cloud stream. Okay, we will add Spring Web. We will add actuator. Now for our messaging middleware, we need to add Kafka binders, but um, I'll add this for now, but that, uh, I'll add, sorry, this one here. I'll add this one now, but that's actually not what we want. Okay, I'm just gonna add it to, to show you what I mean. So if we click here, we can explore this. I'll just maximize this. Hopefully you can just about see here that we've got something called Kafka streams, and we've also got a binder, Spring Cloud Stream binder Kafka streams. We do need a binder. So whenever you're building a Spring Cloud Dataflow application, you need a binder which enables the application to communicate with the underlying messaging middleware but this is not the binder we want it looks like the binder we want but it's not so i'll come on to that in a minute so, so otherwise that's broadly what you want in your initializer config and we're not going to use this because i already have an application that i've downloaded and constructed which i will go through now Okay, so hopefully you can see this application on my screen here. I'll just expand that. So let's have a quick look at the Gradle file here. So something to bear in mind here is that Spring Cloud Stream Binder that we're using is called Spring Cloud Stream Binder Kafka. That's different to Spring Cloud Stream Binder Kafka Streams. This is if you've got an application, a Spring Cloud Stream application, where you want to use case streams and all that kind of stuff, you can include this one. I think you can include both on your class but for our example, we definitely need this one. So you can Google these and you can see documents which talk about the difference between both. I've got it open here. So you see there, this one talks about the use of the Kafka streams binder. And if we go to the top, you've got the one that we want. So you can Google this and find out and read more about this kind of stuff. So you can Google this and find out more about it. Okay, look, back to our example. So what have we got? We've got dependencies on Spring Cloud Stream. We've got dependencies on Spring Cloud Stream binder Kafka. So we can communicate with the underlying messaging middleware. We've got the actuator so that we get the endpoints that we need so that when the application comes up, Spring Cloud Dataflow knows that it's up and running. We've got Starter Web, again, also for exposing those kinds of endpoints. We've also included Spring Cloud Stream Test Support and Spring Boot Starter Test. So this one is really important because without this, your tests will fail. You'll be trying to communicate with a real messaging middleware, which you might not have when you're building your application. Right, so now let's go ahead and look at some code. So we've got this application called ABC, not very well named and doesn't really do very much, but let's have a look at what we've done. So here we have created a class, which is a configuration class, and we've declared one bean, and that bean is a type function. Now in the old world, that would have been a processor. Okay, so a processor takes a value and somehow modifies it or leaves it unchanged and passes it on to the next thing in the chain. Function is, is nothing but a processor. It takes a value, which is of type string, and this one returns a value, which is also of type string. In this case, we call it upper because it just uppercases whatever string that it's passed. Okay, so we're just going to take a quick detour and talk about sources syncs and processes. So streaming pipelines consist of applications, streaming applications, okay, which are weaved together to make a stream pipeline. Now those applications can be one of three types. They can either be a source, a sync, or a processor. So a source is something which brings something into the streaming context. So it may be something that reads an S3 bucket, maybe something that reads a, a, an FTP source or just generates timestamps or whatever, and then it puts that message on the output channel, okay, so it puts it into the streaming context. A processor is something which takes something from an input channel and puts 
outputs it on an output channel. Usually it could operate on other channels as well, but it's basically operating on something that's already in the streaming context. So it's not the outside world, okay? It's something that's already in a stream. It takes it, does something to it and moves it on in the stream. A sync is something that's normally at the end of a stream or at some point in the stream, which takes the message from the stream and takes it outside of the streaming context. So that might be writing to a log file. It might be an external database or communicating with some external system. Now these application types, sources, syncs, and processes correlate very closely to the Java functional interfaces, okay? So a source is something which produces a message and that's very similar to a supplier. So a supplier has a get method, which produces a value and a sync is very similar to a consumer. It takes a value and doesn't return anything because it's done something with the value. It's written it to an external database or it's written it to a log file. And a processor is something which takes a value and returns a value. So some kind of mapping function and that correlates with Java's function, which takes a value T and returns a value R. So it converts T to R. Okay. And that correlates very closely with the processor. So now these, these new idioms are much more familiar to Java developers who are used to seeing functions, suppliers, and consumers. The terms source, sync, and processor are still applicable. So when you look at the dashboard, you still see sources, syncs, and processes. Now you can see sources, syncs, and processes. However, under the hood, when you're implementing them, you can implement them as functions now. So I just wanted to say a bit about how the new functional stuff works. Okay, so that was just a quick detour to talk about the new programming model. Okay, let's get back to where we were. So let's just have a look at the resource file. So the resource is a YAML application properties file. This function here is named upper. It takes the method name and we map that in the properties file, upper in zero, which is the input channel, upper out zero, which is the output channel to the standard input output channels that you get in Spring Cloud Dataflow. Then we expose a few management endpoints. I'm not sure we need all of these. So we don't use in Prometheus, but we don't need that. But I think we definitely need info and health or maybe just health, but either way, they're all exposed so that Spring Cloud Dataflow can connect to those to check for the health of the application. Okay, so we can go ahead and build this code. I'm not going to build it now because I've already built it before. So we're just going to try and register this application in Spring Cloud Dataflow. Let's say add applications and we select register one or more applications. So we give it a name, we'll just call it ABC. Really need to come up with a better name for that. But we selected this processor processor because it takes a value and outputs a different value. And we need to give it a URI. Now in Docker Compose, the way it works is that the file path is something like this. Okay, that's where internally to the Docker Docker image, it's looking for these files. But on your machine, that's the root directory of the Docker Compose file, okay, where the Docker Compose file is located. So let's just double check that that file is there. We go back here. This is where our Docker Compose file is. And here we have the jar file. Okay. This jar file is just from when we built the application. So we did Gradle W clean build. Okay, and that generates a jar file. And that's the jar file that we've copied into this root directory, which Spring Cloud Dataflow, where Docker Compose is running. But internally to Docker Compose, it's mapped that location to, let's just open Safari, it's mapped that location to root a CDF. Okay. And then we give the name of the file, just copy that. Okay. And paste that there. So it's quite important to get this right. It can be quite fiddly to figure out exactly where the locations are, but you can check the Docker Compose file, which has got all this information in there. And there's also instructions on the microsite here. If you click through to this microsite here, there's more information about how to set all of this stuff up. So let's say import application, there's that. And you can see that our application there is there now, and it's declared as a type processor. Okay. So you've got syncs, sources, and processors, and you've got tasks as well, but they're a slightly different thing. Okay. So we're going to come over here now and see if we can create a stream. So first of all, we say create stream. Now here we are going to select HTTP as the first application in the pipeline. Then we're going to select ABC, which is our processor. Should have really called it uppercase. And then we're going to select log. So we get some log output at the other end. Okay, so we just combine those. Okay. And you can see there that we've got HTTP, ABC and log. Now the HTTP application needs to be accessible so we can ping the application that's running inside Spring Cloud Dataflow. Remember we're running in Docker, Docker Compose here. So we need to expose a port. We can do it here by specifying a property, but we'll actually do it on the next screen. So that's our stream. We can say fit to content to tidy it up. And then we can say create stream. Okay, let's give it a name. Let's just call it ABC upper. Okay. Uh, give your give your streams a better name, guys. Okay, now that says that's undeployed. We can expand it to see the diagram, but we can just click deploy. Okay, now here you can see a bunch of properties for the various applications that you've got as part of your stream. Okay, the only one we really need to change is an application property, not a deployment one. So we click in the application properties of the HTTP application. And here we need to expose one. That's an, a port that we can use. So we can only use ports within a certain range that are exposed by Docker Compose. So 20,001 should do the trick. If you have any confusion, just look at, in fact, you can do docker compose 
PS. And you can see all these ports are exposed. These are exposed so that you can access internal applications. So you can see we've got these images here with their relevant ports exposed. Okay, 9393 is the Spring Cloud Dataflow dashboard. And all of these are available to you to use. They're like a range of ports that are available. So we're using 20,001. And these are available so that you can get to the applications running in Spring Cloud Dataflow. So that's all we need. So we've set that. Okay, and we click update. And then we're going to go ahead and deploy the stream. Deploy success. If you get failures when you're trying to deploy, like deployment failures, it may be that the path you specified is not correct. So you might want to check that. Alternatively, the jar file itself might be corrupt. So you also want to check that. There could be a permissions issue. So just keep those in mind if you have any kind of issues accessing the file or deploy failures. Okay, so now that says deploying. So that's not actually up yet. It's still running. But we need to refresh a few times to see if we get a green. Okay, now that's deployed and up and running. So let's just click into that and have a look. So you can get kind of more information about your stream and you can access the logs and all that kind of stuff. So you can click in here in the logs just to see that it's all come up nice and clean. So you can click in here to see the logs. The logs are segregated. So you can see logs by application. So you've got one stream that combines all of these applications, but you can look at the logs for each one independently. So now let's go ahead and test that this works. So if we go back to our terminal and we run something like this. So this is using a little utility called HTTP Pi. You can send a post request on a particular port, but it doesn't really matter. You can use any tool to send this, such as Postman or something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens. So now if we click into the log file for the HTTP application, first of all, okay, nothing useful there. So now if we click into the log file, I should see something hopefully. Yeah, we can see our message. Message equals hello world, all uppercase. So what actually happened was that we invoked from the command line here, we invoked the HTTP application that took the input as a source that took the input and passed it onto the ABC application. The ABC application then uppercase it and passed it on to the log application. Okay, one important thing I did want to mention, you may get an error where your Docker Kafka instance can't come up properly. So let's just have a look at what I mean. So if we say, you can see that we've got a Dataflow Kafka instance running and the status is up. You may see some kind of exit status. I can't remember what the exit failure state is, something like 157. This can happen because you haven't got enough memory allocated to Docker. So I think Docker by default gives two gig. So if you just come over to resources and have a look, I've got nine gig uh, of memory allocated and it starts up fine. Maybe eight is also fine. So you can experiment with that. So if you have trouble with Spring Cloud Dataflow, especially the Kafka component coming up, you'll get some kind of error, something like bootstrap servers is not configured or something like that. Then that's just something to bear in mind. Check the Docker Compose PS command to see if Dataflow Kafka is up and running successfully and it's not there with some kind of exit code. And if it is, you may want to give a bit more juice to your Docker config. And in my case, I've got nine gig. Okay, that pretty much sums up this video where I showed you how to deploy a function into Spring Cloud Dataflow. Functions are the new programming model for deploying applications into Spring Cloud Dataflow. If you found the video useful, hit like and subscribe for more similar content. And if you have any comments or questions, please add them below. Okay, thanks for watching.